about a year ago, someone finally convinced me to try VR flying, and I purchased a uh, Oculus Rift when the price drop took place, uh, and uh, I tried hooking it up to my uh, fairly extensive multi-monitor uh, flight simulator, and uh, found after a short while that it was a pain in the butt trying to connect and disconnect things and keep the simulator running. So I decided to create a dedicated cockpit. I took an old desk I had in my uh, uh, retired uh, CH yoke and Satek throttle and rudder pedals and tried to create a kind of makeshift VR cockpit. While this was a vast improvement, I still found myself smacking my uh, controllers into the desk and yoke and I came to the conclusion I needed to design a cockpit that was designed specifically for VR flying. So I came up with several design goals or criteria to design a do-it-yourself cockpit that could be easily built for uh, use for home VR flying. So here's a list of my design goals. First, the cockpit should be designed solely for VR use and should eliminate structural elements that aren't needed for VR. Elimination of structure beyond that required to support the primary flight controls would eliminate interference between the controllers and virtual controls in the VR cockpit. Next, since there's several commercial products like this in the $800 to $1,000 range and up, uh, this should be a project that can be built for a reasonable price, say two to three hundred dollars. The cockpit should be fairly easy to build by the average do-it-yourselfer using tools that are usually available in the average home, including a circular saw, cordless drill, and a saber saw. I also chose to build the cockpit from wood which is readily available at uh, big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and several other parts that are available on Amazon and Harbor Freight so that anyone could find the parts to build this cockpit. The cockpit should also be flexible allowing for either left or right handed throttle, a center yoke which would be removable and a left or right stick, also a center stick and helicopter controls also, including a cyclic and collective. Hopefully this flexibility would allow you to uh, move the controls to simulate just about any aircraft you'd like to fly in VR. A final goal I had was portability, so I mounted the simulator on casters uh, that would lock and could be moved around especially now with inside-out tracking coming for VR flying uh, there's no external sensors required so the location is not important and being able to move it is especially useful if you don't have a dedicated area to operate the cockpit this way you can roll it out of the way when it's not in use now I'm not going to pretend that I've thought of everything and that this is an all-inclusive list of design ideas but I do want to share with you what I've done uh, not to provide a step-by-step -step direction on how to do it yourself but just to provide some ideas and then I'd love to see what other people come up with uh, I'm sure there are many areas that can be approved upon in fact there's some areas that I would change now in retrospect and I'll try to address those at the end of the video so here's a first look at what I came up with you can see on the left side there's a uh, platform with an armrest and a place for the uh, left-handed uh, stick control, joystick control. Uh, there's two platforms that can accommodate uh, throttles on either side and uh, also joystick and you can see the uh, center control column uh, that supports the yoke is removable. Also have decided to use uh, just a standard office chair that I had available. Of course you could build a, a solid uh, a fixed chair in there if you'd like. Uh, but I didn't have that available and I wanted to keep the cost down. Also mounted the computer on a rolling stand that I got for a reasonable price uh, so that the entire unit can be moved. So here we are in the cockpit. You can see that uh, 
the use of the controllers is unimpeded by any structure. The only permanent structure sticking up are the two throttle platforms on the left and the right side. The armrest and the control yoke, which is in place here but can be removed also. Uh, with a clamping arrangement, it's quite secure and those parts can be removed and uh, can be adapted for other uses. Now the goal here was to be able to uh, simulate a left side stick or right side stick with a throttle on the opposite side or also a center stick. I'm also planning a uh, replacement for the removable left armrest to allow attachment of a collective to fly helicopters. The real beauty of building a one-off uh, personal uh, do-it-yourself cockpit is that you can uh, make it fit your body perfectly. The immersion of uh, VR truly is uh, awesome and I'm really glad that I've created a cockpit that I can uh, comfortably fly VR in. I think uh, you'll see that the wood construction I've used is uh, approachable by most anyone with uh, basic handyman skills. So what I'd like to do for the rest of this video is describe how I built this cockpit and give you some ideas how you might be able to adapt these techniques to building your own home cockpit for VR flying. So if you're like me and you really enjoy building things, why don't you uh, stick around and I'll show you what I did and how you can do it yourself. The basic materials for the project aren't expensive, so even if you start and fail, you don't have much to lose. It all starts with a 4x8 sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood and 6 2x4s 8 feet long. Now the big box stores will cut the plywood for you. They have a, uh, a big saw that will make nice square cuts and once you have the dimensions determined uh, you can have it cut. I had it cut in three pieces as you see here. Once you determine the size of your platform you can have the plywood cut which makes it easier to take home. You can use the extra pieces for the platforms and other components that you'll be building so there's not that much waste. Now in my case I was limited to 34 inches because I wanted to be able to put it through a 36 inch door into a room I have in my basement. As for the length I just set my chair, rudder pedals and uh, controls out and just got a feel for what space I needed. The first step is to cut some 2x4s to fit flush uh, building a frame the exact same size as the plywood. Now for fastening the project together I highly suggest you spend a little extra and buy Star or Torx self-drilling screws. This won't split the wood and these uh, star-shaped drivers are very very high torque and they do not uh, easily strip out. So it's easy to assemble and disassemble if you make a mistake. There's really no reason to use glue if you use these these uh, fasteners, uh, I suggest two and a half inch to connect the larger pieces of two by four together and probably one and a quarter inch to connect the plywood to the two by four. Once you've built the perimeter of the frame, it's a good idea to flip things over and apply a screw to each of the four corners to hold the plywood temporarily in place. Then flip things back over as you see here to continue building the structure. This might be a good time to pull your chair out and your rudder pedals and uh, place them uh, in the structure to check the geometry to decide how far aft you want to put those uh, the cross braces for the upward supports for the throttles. You can see here how this thing gets laid out. It's fairly easy to build. And here's what my structure looked like as I was building it. I used a uh, miter saw, power miter saw to make the cuts, uh, but you could very easily do it with a circular saw or even a hand saw if you were careful and took your time. When you're done building the frame, you can just uh, go ahead and mark where you need to make your cutouts. And once you make your cutouts, just remove the plywood, place it on top 
slide it down and attach it to the frame. Here's a view of my project at this stage of building. These are the inexpensive casters I found at Harbor Freight. I attached them to uh, the bottom of the frame by adding an additional piece of 2x4 at each of the four corners and then lag screwing them up into the 2x4s underneath. Now this is a good time to rethink again the uh, layout. Put your chair and uh, some of your gear up there and actually look at where it's, you want the platforms to be and how you want to lay it out so that you can be sure that uh, that everything is going to be in a good reach from your sitting position. I think it's best to leave it to each individual's uh, imagination how they want to lay things out as they create the uh, areas for the flight controls. So here's a view of the project uh, when I've completed all the construction. You can see the casters have been added. I've added the platforms. I tried to make the platforms wide enough to handle uh, two SATEC throttles. You can see the center pulls out. And you can see how the two cross pieces line up and that's where we'll put the clamps to hold that down. Tried to keep the 34 inch total width and you can see I've added a uh, strip along the side and back to keep the chair from rolling off. Platforms are quite sturdy. I also made the center pedestal platform wide enough to handle either a the smaller yoke or even the larger uh, style yokes like the Yoko that I have. You can see the armrest that's removable. As I said, I make an alternate version that would be shorter to hold a collective for use as a helicopter. And once that's in position, those will be held with clamps also. You notice I've doubled up the platforms by laminating two pieces of plywood to make it a little thicker for those uh, things that need to clamp underneath. Here again you can see the, the uh, edge, a piece of uh, furring strip around the edge screwed down to keep the chair from rolling off. So that's the basic view of the uh, project. Uh, now we're ready for some paint and to move on. Now a little bit about the toggle clamps that I use to attach the temporary parts of the structure. There are uh, latch clamps that are available on Amazon. You can see the information here. There's lots of providers. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive, a couple dollars a piece. They have about 220 pounds of holding capacity per so I probably used overkill as you'll see on the yoke I put for them uh, and that thing is just as firm as if it had been screwed in. So to get the yoke out of the way just a matter of uh, releasing the clamps, disengaging the, uh, the uh, hooks and uh, once it's dis disengaged you can lift it just lift it right out and uh, put it someplace out of the way and you can use the uh, side controllers or whatever and not have that in the way. You can also build a shorter version of this to, con to hold a, a center stick that would just have a shorter uh, riser and a platform. That's something that I'm going to look at also. Now as far as the side armrest you can see in this picture that uh, I only used two clamps, one on each side and that was more than enough to give it stability. I also found I needed to make a slight modification to the armrest. The little platform was a great position for the throttle but for the stick it was a little too far forward. Plus I noticed I needed a rest for my arm to be able to have a, a very accurate inputs to the stick. So I came up with this add-on which clamps on but can also be removed. The final thing I added was a rolling computer stand that I found on Amazon which for a reasonable price allowed me to position the computer out of the direct line of sight where it would block any tracking sensors and also that allowed me to have e easy access without bumping into it all the time with the controllers when it was placed immediately in front of me. 
So back to the cockpit to conclude our circuit around the pattern and um, a few lessons learned. First of all, I think that I have learned that the position of the throttle and the position of a side stick are not the same. The side stick needs to be further aft and higher up and it needs a place to rest the forearm to have precise control. So I think I would make the cockpit about five inches wider and put those little receiver squares on the other side too so that the whole unit could be built with that armrest and just transferred left and right depending on which side it was used on. I would still leave the platforms though for the throttle on both sides. Of course this assumes that you have access to the seat from either side and that the cockpit is not up against a wall restricting access. All in all I'm quite happy with the results of this uh, first try at building a VR cockpit. For under $200 I feel like I got a pretty good value and uh, of course it could always be improved. Uh, I think it was a worthwhile project. Surprisingly my wife especially liked the idea of mounting the whole thing on casters so that it could be moved to be cleaned under and to get it out of the way when she needed the space. I hope uh, those of you who have other ideas will be uh, liberal in posting your comments and suggestions. I hope you'll also be posting links to your own videos of what you might have come up with, either using some of my ideas or creating ideas of your own. After a long career as an airline pilot and a professional pilot, I still find aviation exciting, even virtual aviation. So I'm going to continue to be posting videos and other items of interest as I uh, continue this hobby of mine. If you'd like to uh, be alerted when I post new videos, you can subscribe and click the little notification bell and you'll receive an email when I post videos. If you have more detailed or specific questions about how I built this or how you might build it yourself, feel free to contact me uh, via the comments section. I'll try to answer you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching this. Appreciate your time. See you again soon.